will come back all of you nana here and then we are into the next today's program on this diffusion inventory implementation so let me go on and share my screen So now we go there and then have a look at our agenda actually. See SCM training. So here I will now go to the fusion inventory worksheet. I will now go to the fusion inventory worksheet and double click on it. At any point of time, whenever you have any doubt, please ask me. Have you got the instance to practice? Not yet, sir. No, oh, God. <laughs> really very, very difficult. Why there are two rooms now? Fine. Uh, you are sitting in two different locations or what? You are having two rooms, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the same Noida only. The problem in the picture. Yes, sir. We have two rooms here for this uh, class. Yeah. <laughs> So we have completed the serial control, we have completed the lot control, we have completed the OCA, MCA, and then revision numbers, and then revision control. Now we are going to go to the next topic called locator control. Right? Locator control is the next topic which we are going to go on. Right? So locators. Suppose locators are like what? You are having Almera and then shelf. So if you keep it on Almera and then in the shelf, the item will not be damaged actually. That is the biggest advantage. So if I'm going to have very many locators in the sub inventory, then the average seek time will be very, very economical, actually. Let us say, normally, if you keep it in a, in a haphazard manner in the sub inventory, if I ask my inventory boy to go and then make a search, he will not take approximately five minutes to search for the item. But if I'm going to give it on the first rack, first row, second rack, and then the third bin, we call them as a bin. So if I say, you go there, go 5, comma 7, comma 12, you go and then pick up the bulb and then come up. So he will be picking up the bulb within a minute's time and then come back, come back, come, come to the front actually. So the average seek time of what happens, a uh, uh, locator controlled sub inventory is very fast actually. So we can identify the material very fast. And then further item will not be damaged actually. So that is all, these are the two major advantages. The material damage, material handling damages will be minimal if you have a locator control. And then the average seek time is excellent actually if you have a locator actually. So locators, we are going to keep it, and then it will be very safe for the item, actually. Item will not be damaged. You will not be overloading on the same thing, okay? You will not keep only minimal items on this. And so locator control is an excellent control, actually. But it will not cost you money. In a factory, what happens if you're going to have locators? That is, you're going to have almiras and then shelf. What happens? It will not cost you money to keep the items on the locators, actually. So, but if the if there is a very costly item, then we, have, we are forcibly go to for, for locator control. So many, many uh, chemicals and petrochemicals will be having only locator controlled sub inventories actually. The sub inventories are locator controlled and so what happens, it will be coming like this. So we go there and then we'll have a look at it. So we are going to begin locator control. So I'll now open up the fusion inventory documentation and then here I will now go for the locator control. So there is one thing called locator control, <coughs> a document called locator control on fusion inventory documentation. I'm opening it up. I double click and then I open. So we are now opening the <coughs> locator control actually. Good. So here we have four controls on the org level. And when you are creating an org, it is a no control, it is a pre-specified. So we will now go on and see these four controls actually on the org. I will now go to the manage inventory org. I click on it. I will now go to the setup and maintenance and then I go to the manage inventory org. Click on it. And then here I go to the search, you know, find search, and I go to the manage inventory org. So I go to the manage inventory org, and then here I click on it. And then let me query my org. It is a T10. Enter it. So we are querying it now. So let me open up my first org now. Find select it and then click on the edit button. I'm editing it. So once when I edit, what happens? We go there. I will now click on the next in the top. Click on the next in the top. So here, what happens? You can now see this thing now. Right? The locator control now. Right? Go there, drop down. So there no control. That means what? There are no locators at all in this organization. If you have a previously defined locator control, that means what? We have a fixed number of almeras. So we have to transact only on those almeras only. Right? We have to transact everything. We cannot keep the item on the floor at all. On the floor, we cannot keep it. And if it is going to be a dynamic entry, 
if it is going to be a dynamic entry, then what happens? We can even pull in the Almera during transaction. If there is not sufficient space in the Almeras, then we can even pull in, pull in a new Almera and then keep it on the Almera actually. Uh, Almera will have multiple uh, shelf actually. Every shelf is known as a bin in uh, Fusion actually. So we can even pull in uh, Almera and then keep the item on the on the one. If it is going to be determined at subunit level, the organization is relinquishing control and then passing on at the lower level. In both account. So what happens is no control, predefined dynamic. And then if you say at the organization level, determined at subunit level, that means what? Organization is relinquishing the control and then passing on to the subinventory. So every subinventory can have its own control actually. So that is what you are going to know. So it is <coughs> strongly recommended to what? Relinquish the control and then pass it on to the subunit level. So in this one, what happens? It is not chosen as what? Locator control determined at subunit level. That is the best level actually recommended by Oracle. Oracle recommends this level as the best level. So we have already chosen the locator control determined at subunit level. I will not give an answer. Now I am not going to create three subinventories now. Right? Sub one is going to be pre-specified subinventory. Go there. So click on that now. We will not go to the manage subinventory the locators. No go there. We will not go to the manage percentage fine. Sub percentage fine. Loca percentage. I go there, manage subunit of the locators. Fine, go, click on it. So we'll now go to the manage subunit of the locators. We go there. And then here uh, we are in 101 only. So I will now create three sub inventories, sub one, sub two, and sub three for this exercise. Actually, I will now click on plus now fine. I will now make sub one. Fine, go there. It is a sub one. Sub underscore one. I'm creating it. So go there. So I will not take a copyright, put it in the description. Go there. Fine. And then here, what happens? Everything is okay. Fine. Locator control is not done. I will now make it as what previously defined. That means what we have to specify what are all the locators which are going to be on the sub inventory. Now, right? It is a previously defined location. Uh, now, what happens? The locator control is what previously defined. Location always you put it fine. The T10 and then give it app. The location will become right. Now, the locator structure is required actually. So here we have one four segmental locator structure. So before doing it, what happens? Let me go and then create my structure actually. I will not go to the top. Right click and then duplicate. I am not going to create a locator structure actually. I am not going to get a locator structure. Right, click on it. Click on it. And then here, what happens? You go there. Go to the setup and maintenance. And then let me create a locator structure actually. So click on it. And then here, click on search. No, fine. I go to what? Manage locator. Manage personage. Fine. Locator personage flux field. I am not going to create a locator key flux field. It is called manage locator key flux field actually. The task name is what? Man percentage, loca percentage, flex percentage, view it, and then your percentage uh, entering, it will become a, you choose this manage locator key flex field. Thank you for it. I am not going to create a new one now. Thank you for it. So I will now click on the manage structures. Now click on the manage structures. You can see already it is deployed actually. So click on the manage structures and then I am going to create a new structure. Fine, click on plus now. <clears throat> I will now create it. I will now say T10. <clears throat> I will now say uh, lock structure. Locate, locator structure now. So I will not take a copy. So click on the name. So click on the name. Click on the description and then put the delimiter as a hyphen now. Hyphen will be the delimiter and then once when you give a save, the plus symbol will be coming. So once when you give a save, the plus symbol at the bottom will be coming. The segments can be created. Thank you, contrast. So I will have first segment as what? Row. Row is my segment now. First segment is row. I go there. So you will have multiple rows of locators. Now click on the API name. The API name will be coming automatically. Don't do anything at all. Fine. Specify a name that identifies the one. Fine. It has to come now. Fine. Segment will go. It's not coming at all. Oh God! <clears throat> I will do one thing. I will not give a cancel. No. I will give a cancel because a row is a, a pre-specified one. It's not coming now. I will not say what happens. T10 underscore. I will not make because the row is already existing. When go there, if I click on the API name, it will be coming automatically. So it is not allowing you to put row. Row is a predefined one, so it is not allowing you. So put your prefixes and then put the first segment code. Now. <laughs> the API name is coming. Fine. Paste it. Click on the description now. And then here it is segment number one. The prompt is the same one. And then the short prompt is also same. Now, fine, go that one. Display width is going to be 20 characters. Fine, go that one. Column number is what? Drop down. I will not choose what? Segment one. So go there. Here, what happens? I will not choose one uh, generic one. Okay, because it's going to be a free form now, actually. So I can even choose 1,000 characters. Fine. So 1,000 characters you can choose now. Fine. So click on 1,000 characters, you can choose it. It doesn't have any qualifiers at all. So our supply chain. Flux fields will not have any qualifiers. Whereas in the previous one, what happens? They will be having a what's called a qualifier here. So that is called label. Fine. In the GL, we'll be having labels, but here in supply chain, we don't have any labels at all. Click on save and close. So that's it. So my first structure segment is now created. Fine. Click on save and close is not allowed. Thousand characters is okay. You know. So the value of the thousand characters cannot be assigned to the segment in application. So on so on is not allowing you. And what you do is you will not choose something. Enough. It's not allowing you. Fine. Drop down. 
and then click on search. Right? I will not choose 150 characters. 150 characters is okay. Man. 150 characters. So it's a character actually. Wait, give a second. So you can choose 150 characters or anything you can choose. Now I click on drop down and then click on search. Now fine. I will not search on the GL actually. Mm -hmm. GL is the one. Fine. Make a search. Now fine. Click on search. And you will not find so many characters are there. I will not choose 20 characters of GL. GL, I will not choose 20 characters. I will not choose GL 20 characters. No. So, <clears throat> So click on save and close by which what happened. The first segment of row is now created. Now we will now go for a rack. Every row will have multiple racks. Racks is basically Almeras. I click on plus. I will now create a rack actually. I will now say T10 underscore rack. The rack. So, so take a copy it and then click on the API name will be coming automatically. API name will be coming automatically. Don't do anything at all. Name I am now pasting it. Description I am pasting it. It is going to be the second segment of menu. Click on the prompt and then I am now pasting the prompt. And click on the short prompt and I'll paste it. Nothing about that. And then display with is going to be 20 characters. Nothing about that. So here, ring column name and drop it down. I will not choose segment two for this. One. And then go there. Here again on the GL, we will not choose. Nothing. Click on GL. Find GL. Go on. GL is the best one. No? General ledger. Find go there. So click on search. We'll be searching for it. And then you'll not find it. No? I will not choose 20 characters. The same value sets can be created. It's 20 characters basically. Click on there. So we are now completed the creation of a rack. And then go there. Click on plus and then we'll not create a bin actually. So T10. Fine. I'll now say bin. So the bin I'm creating it now. Fine. Take a copy of it. So for my convenience, I'm writing everything in small. In reality, what happens? You have to go to the field and then ask the naming convention for the end client. Now, end client will now give you the exact name. What you have to do? Or you propose to them, and then they will approve it. So only when the naming convention is approved, you have to exactly do with the capital and small. Click on the API. So for a training, we are not doing like this. Again, it is now giving a problem. Now fine. Uh, sp uh, no, it came. It came. It came. So click on the name. Now fine. Otherwise, you have to change the name. No, fine. The API name doesn't come means what you don't do anything on this. No, fine. Here's the third segment. Fine, go there. Click on it. I will not put the prompt over here. Fine. I will not set the prompt. Fine, go there. Display which is going to be 20 characters. Fine, go there. Come on. The column name is the third segment, actually. Segment three. And then here, I will again choose the GL now. And click on search. I will not choose the GL. GL 20 characters I am going to choose. I will not choose the GL 20 characters. Now, fine, click on it. Click on OK. Now, fine, click on OK. I'm not doing it. Now, fine, click on OK. And then click on Save and Close. So now we have created the three segments for our structure, actually. Locator structure we have created. So click on Save and Close. Everything must be preceded by your number, actually. Now, click on Save and Close. So that what happens, you don't be confusing. Now, click on Done again. Come back. So we have completed the creation of a structure. Now we are going to go for the structure instance. Right? Click on the Manage Structure Instance. Go there. Click on Plus. In the uh, after having done the structures, fine. Right? The structures, what I mean, if you go to the structure and if you query my T10, you'll be finding it now. Right? Click on and then click on search, you'll now find our structure available here. And if you click on the edit now, it will now show all the three segments over here. So click on cancel, click on done, and then come out of it, and then click on what manage structure instances. So click on the manage structure instances and then click on plus. I'm going to give a plus. So here I say what it is the T10. <clears throat> I will now say it is a three segmental, three seg, what happens, locator. So I'm now giving a three segmental locator actually. It's a three segmental locator. Fine, take a copy of it. And then click on the API name. That will be coming automatically. Click on the name now. The API name will be coming automatic. Fine, click on the description and then paste it now. Fine, go there. And then here, the short name drop down. I will now choose my T10 locator structure. Fine, this is the one I'm choosing here. So now what happens? Everything is coming. Fine. Here, previously we used to make required as yes actually. Here it is not so. Here. What happens? I don't think it is okay. I will not make it as yes. No, fine. Click on edit now. Fine. Click on edit. I will not make all the three required as yes. No, fine. I'll select it and then click on the edit. I will not make required as yes. Required as yes. Fine. So I'll not make everything required as yes. Select it and then click on edit. I'll not make required as yes. Click on okay. And then go there. I've not select it. That means what all the three things are required actually. Row, rack, bin are required for completing a structure creation. So it's all done now. Fine, give a save and close by which what happens is not completed. Go there. So go there. If you go and then query my this thing, I find it. My three segmental locator structure will be ready now. Right? Click on search, it will be ready. If you click on edit, what we can now see all the with the required as this. Now we are going to deploy it. Right? So whenever you come for only viewing it, don't see, give a save or save and close. Give a cancel and then come out of it. The purpose of coming into the screen is only to view, then give a cancel. If the purpose is to change, then save and edit. Save and save and close. If it is only for viewing, you can cancel and then come out of it. That is the logic. There is a software logic. In it. So click on that. Now, what happens is we had to deploy it. Once when the deployment is completed, the deployment says we want to click on deploy. I am not deploying this key flux field. It will be very fast, actually. It will not be like that. The key flux field of GL, actually. GL flux fields will be taking a long time. See, deployment is progress. Everything has got deployed. And then you will now get a message in the top that it has got deployed. Actually. <clears throat> So 
So you'll be getting a message of the product. The deployment has now got completed successfully. And then afterwards, we can go ahead and then put it on our sub inventory now. Someone is going to be a pre specified sub inventory where we will now put this. Still working now <clears throat> because we are working for the first time. And so what happens sometimes it will take a long time. Second time and third time, what happens? It will be fast actually. This is relatively fast when compared to the GL actually. So this so. So you can see the deployment completed successfully message has come. If I click on OK, by which you order again, you see it tick mark. So the flux field creation is now complete. One structure and then one instance, and then afterwards we had to deploy it. And click on that. Exactly watch and then do it. You go to the manage subunities here. What happens? I have now made the previously defined here. What happens? I drop down and then choose my structure. Mine is not coming. What I have to do now? Anybody? My structure I just created is not coming. What I have to do now? Sir, we need to log in, uh, log out and re-log in. Exactly, fine. So Mukul is very correct now, fine. Here, Mukul Tyagi now, fine. I'm, I'm not able to remember it. Am I correct? Yeah, sir. Uh, Mukul Tyagi, please uh, guide others now, fine. Uh, when, whenever somebody practicing it, what happens? You please guide others also, fine. So whenever something, some changes are not happening, what happens? You log out and log in to have this, fine. They so give a cancel now. Log out and log in. Then the changes will be visible now. Fine, click on that. <clears throat> And then what happens? Log out and log in. Okay, click on it. And then sign out and sign in. Beautiful. Okay. There are some good intelligent guys there. So please help others in uh, what happens. They're doing the practices very properly. Remember, before you go to the field, you have to practice every concept now. No cinema, no beach, no girlfriends. Okay. Only Oracle now. Okay. That way you have to work. So now what happens? You go there. I will now click on the name. And then what happens? You go there. Go to the setup and maintenance. And then here, you can go there. And then cover over it. So click on it and then go to the search and you know, click on search and then you go to manage sub inventory and locate this. Manage percentage, fine. sub percentage, look up percentage. We go there and then we are going to create our locator. You know, click on it. So the flux field creation is now complete. We go there and then here ensure that you are in the first org. Otherwise, change the org. If you are not in the proper org, change the org. You know, fine. Click on plus. You know, fine. I will now make one sub one. You know, fine. I will now say sub underscore one. You know, fine. It is a sub one. So here, active fine, for the storage. And then locator control is what? Previously defined. That means what? Whatever Almeras are there, we can only transact on those Almeras. Now. So that's what. Location is what? You go there, T10, and then give it a The lock one will be coming. Here, drop down. One the chi. We got it. Fine, this is not coming. So previously, it was not coming. So once when you log out and log in. Any changes are not reflecting on the transactional systems, please log out and log in. Now, fine. There is a, uh, what happens? A famous one, is a, like a Bible now. Fine. You just keep it on your heart now. So that is the one now, fine. The locator structure is now created. We have a save and close now, fine. Sub one is now created. Now, in sub two, when you transact on sub two, if there is no space, let us say I have four shelves, four almeras are there, and there is no space, I can bring in one more almera and then do it. That means what? We can dynamically create a locator during transaction. Here it is not possible. During transactions, we cannot create any locators. We have to transact only on the existing locators. So if it is a dynamic, we can even pull in almera and then during transaction, we can keep it on the almera. So click on plus now. Fine. Sub two is going to be dynamic. Go there. Sub two. Sub underscore two. Fine. Go there. Small. I will not take a copy of it. Fine. Go there. Put the description. Is it? And go there. Here location is what? T ten. I will give it a tap. <clears throat> now coming. Go there. So here. I will go there. And then choose this one. And then here the locator control is going to be dynamic, not pre specified. Dynamic means what? We can even pull in Almera during transaction if there is no space on the existing locators. Previously, it was pre specified that we cannot pull in a new Almera during transaction. It is a dynamic array, fine, click on seven rules. And then the best level which Oracle recommends is what? You again relinquish the control to the item level. So initially, org has relinquished the control to the subunit level. This is going to relinquish the control at the item level, actually. Fine, determined item level is the best level, actually. That is what Oracle recommends. Every sub inventory must be at this level. That is the best level, actually. So go there. So it is a three level, what happens, uh, control. One at the org level, one at the sub unit level, and one at the item level. So, go there. so click on plus, and then I will now create the sub three, which is going to relinquish the control to the item level, actually. Sub underscore three. So take a copy of it, and then go there. Click on the description of it, and then go there. And then here, what happens, locate control, what? Item level. So this is the third level, the item level. It item level, I'm controlling it. Go there, T10 is the one, fine, give a tap, it'll be coming. And then here, drop down, and then choose your structure, actually. So it is the item level control. If I click on seven. So item will have three controls actually. Item will have three controls. Fine. If it is a no, no control in the item on the locator, what happens? We can keep it on the floor of the shop floor. In the shop floor, we can even keep it on the floor. If it is going to be a pre-specified, 
we can only transact onto the existing locators only. If it is going to be a dynamic, we can even pull in and then keep it on the slaves. So item one is no control. Item two is pre-specified. Item three is dynamic. So all of them we are transacting on the sub inventory. So item one, we will now keep it on the floor. Item two, we will now uh, transact only on the existing locators. Item three, if the existing locators are not having it, what happens? You can even, you can even pull in a rack and then do it. So that means what? Items will be kept on the floor as well as on the rack also. Whereas here, items can be kept only on the rack, sub one, sub two. We can keep it only on the rack. Whereas here, we can even keep it on the floor as well as on the rack, depending upon the item level control. That means what? It is a hybrid control. Sub three is basically hybrid in nature where we can even keep it on the floor and then do it. Fine, that is what I do. Now tell me, I'm not going to have an item which is having a no control. I'm having an item with a no control. So if I transact it to sub inventory one, it will now behave like a what? pre specified or dynamic or item level or how it will behave actually. This item, fine, let's say item 10. I'm transacting it on sub one. When I transact it, I got three locators. One, first of all, let me create the locators on the sub one. I keep my customer on the sub inventory one. And then select it and then care what happens to go to the manage locators. Select the sub inventory and then click on the manage locators. I'm going to create the locators. I click on manage locators. Click on plus. I will now create what? Two locators. Now, right? One and then one and then one. So if the row rack bin is one, one, one. Save and create another. So what happens if you got one, one, one? Fine. Click on save and create another. So we'll now create one more. Now, right? Click on save and create another. We're now creating it. Click on, we're now creating another one. Another. So I'll now say one, 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 and then one, one, one. <laughs> And uh, so click on save and create and uh, save and close that's it so we have got two locators here one and 11 on this place when click on them and then similarly i will now keep my cursor on sub two keep my cursor on sub two and then click on the manage locators click on the manage locators and then here i'm not going to create what two and 22 fine click on plus now fine. two and 22 so go there is a two 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 fine save and create another fine click on the save and create another we are going to create another one here what happens 22, fine, 22, fine, 22. So 22, fine, save and close. So it has got two locators. Fine, click on what, done now. I may keep my cursor on the third one. <clears throat> so click on the third one. The third one I'm keeping it now, fine. So click on the manage locators. <clears throat> I'm not going to go over. So click on plus now. I will now create what, three and 33 now. Fine, three, three, three. Save and create another. It is a 33, 33, 33 now. 33, 33, 33. So click on save and close by which what happens that we have completed creation of two, two locators and every sub inventory. Now, my question is what? Item 10, I'm having it now. Item 10 is having no control. So I'm now transacting on sub one. Fine. Where I can put? I Can I put it on the floor? Can somebody say yes to me? Is it possible for me to put item 10 on the floor on sub inventory one? Yes or no <clears throat> is my question now. Can anybody answer me? Is yes or no? Oh, nobody is answering me. Okay, fine. So item item 10, I am not transferring it to sub inventory 1. That means what? I cannot keep it on the floor. We can keep on 1 or 11 only. 1 or 11 only. If the no control item is not transacted to sub inventory 2, what happens? We can transact on 2 or 22 only. We cannot keep it on the floor. But if I transact the item 10 on sub inventory 3, we can very well keep it on the floor because it is hybrid in nature. So item 11, let us say, is a pre-specific. Item 11 is having a pre specified Item 11. 10 is over. Item 11 is a pre specified So if you go there, again, we can keep only on 1 and 11 only. And then if item level is pre specified in sub 2, what happens? We can transact on 222. If there is not sp sufficient space, we can even bring in a new Almera and then keep it. Let us say uh, 222, 222, 222. Like that, we have one more, one, more, so one more thing we can create and then do it. Even though item is a pre specified control, the control of the item will be ignored when you are transacting it on sub 1 or sub 2. So sub one and sub two's control levels prevail, and then they will now override the item level controls. But only when you transact the item onto the sub three, then only item level control comes into picture. Actually, otherwise, item level controls are ignored when you transact on sub one and sub two. Sub one and sub two's control levels only will prevail. Actually, is the concept clear? Can you say somebody say this to me? Is it clear? I have asked a question now. <clears throat> I have just now what I was I described it. <clears throat> or do you want me to repeat? Yes, sir. It's very clear enough. Fine. Good, good, good. It's clear. Good. So that is how it works out. Okay. You, can, you are on mute. Okay, you are on mute. Okay. <laughs> you don't mute it now. Fine. Uh, sir, it's sir, it's sir, it's sir. 
<laughs> okay, fine, bro. So now we have now completed everything. Now what we are going to do is we are going to make a transaction. Now, fine, click on it. So click on plus now, fine. You will now make it. Right click and then duplicate. We are now going to make a transaction. Right click on, right click and then duplicate it. And then we will now first of all create an item first of all. Now go right click on it. We will now create three items. So one is a no control. One is a pre-specified control. And then one is a what about the dynamic control? So click on the star icon. <clears throat> And then here, what you go to the product information management. I will now be creating three items to demonstrate this locator control. <clears throat> so click on it. First of all, you will now see the item numbers. Now, if I click on it, you now go there. So go, go to the browse items and then have a look at the item numbers. And then I will now create three items. So go there. I will now query on T10. On T10. And then click on search. Now, we are searching for it. I click on search. A lot of items will be there. So the last item is what? 10, 11, and 12. So I will now create 13, 14, and 15 for this exercise actually. Right. So 13 will be no control, and then the 15, 14 will be pre-specified, and then 15 will be dynamic. I will not get three such items. Click on, click on, click on, click on. <clears throat> so go there, click on it. I will not create what is wrong. Go there. So click on done, and then come out. 13, 14, 15, I am going to create. Click on it. I will not go to the create item. I click on the create item. I will not put my master or go here. So it's a T10, it's a master. T10 is the master. Go there, click on it. And then go there. Here, what am I? I will not put T10. So T10. So go there. Come on. T10. Is so it's not unfunk. Click on it. 13, 14, 15 are the three times I'm going to get. Ignore the warning. Unfunk. Click on it. Ignore the warning. Go there. So 13, 14, 15, we are going to create. So go there. It's a T10. Fine. 13. Fine. I will not say no locator control. Lock control. So it is a no locator control. It will not have any locator control at all. Take a copy of it and then put it in the description. And take a copy of it and then put on the description. You know, put, go, go to the specifications and then go to the inventory. You know, and go to the inventory. So go to the specifications and go to the inventory. So in the inventory, what happens? You go down in the bottom. What happens? You can now see this. So go there. Locator control. What happens? I will not say stock locator control is no control. Right, no control is okay. No control is okay. Fine. No, no control. Go there. I'll go there. So go to the associations and then let me associate the child arm. I will not go to the actions and then go to the certain act. And then let me associate the child arm. The T10. And then enter in. The child arm. Click on apply. So the first item is a no control item. So that means what? It will have no control at all. So the no control item, the no control will be effective only when you are transacting it to sub 3. Otherwise, in sub 1 and sub 2, it will have no effort at all. Even though it is a no control, we have to transact only on the existing sub unit here. And then on the existing sub unit only. When you transact this item on the sub inventory, it depends upon the item. Item is no control. So we can very well keep it on the flow. It will never ask for locators at all. So we have 1 and 11. We have 2 and 22. We have 3 and 33. So it is no control means what? It will not ask any locators when you transact on sub 3. We have to keep it on the flow room, not on the Almiras. Got it? So it is now associated. I will now give a save and close. The 13 is now created actually. We will now go ahead and then create the 14th one. The 14 is a pre-specified control. The 14th item will be a pre-specified control. So 13, 14, and 15, we are going to do it now. 13 is one. It will be a pre-specified control. So click on save and close by which what happens? It will be a pre-specified control. And click on it. And now go on and create our item. Click on the great item. The 14th is a pre-specified control. So go there. So it's a T10 log. <clears throat> you know, putting the R. We are putting the R. So the item class is our class now in T10. And then give it a tab. You'll be coming. When click on OK now. The 14th is a pre-specified control. Fine. Click on this. The 14th item will be a pre-specified control. Fine. If the T10, fine. 14. I will now say pre-specified. That means what? We can transact only onto the existing uh, existing locators, provided you transact on sub 3. So this control will be effective only when you transact on sub 3. If you transact this item to this or this. The sub inventory controls prevail. Right? The sub inventory controls prevail. It will not, it will not ignore the item level control actually. Go there, click on it. Not up. And go to the specifications and then I will not make it as a pre-specified control. Fine, and go to the inventory. In the bottom of the inventory, what happens? I will not make it as a pre-specified. Stock locator control is what? Pre-specified. The item control is a pre-specified one. Fine, go there, click on it. I will not assign it to the R. Go there. So click on the associations and then let me associate to the R. So go to actions and then go to self net. We are going to associate to the R. So T10 and then entry now. So the first child, fine, click on apply. 
and I click on that by which what happens, it gets associated to the R. And go there. Save and close. The 14th item is now created. We'll now go ahead and create the 15th item now. I click on it. The 15th item is a dynamic item. Now click on it. Now click on the create item. You're going to get the 15th item. So go there. It's a T10. It's a master of it. I will not choose my item class now. T10 is the item class. Oh, sorry. T10 is the item class. No, choose this item. So click on OK. No, that's it. Ignore the one. It's a T10 15. The T10 15. I will not say dynamic. That means what? If there is no space in the existing shelf, we can very well what happens, sir? create a new one. No, space. Go there. Go to the specifications and go to the inventory. Click on this. I will not go to the inventory. Click on the inventory. And then here what is going to be dynamic. Dynamic entry is around. So dynamic entry is around. So go there. So click on save and close. Now we have now completed the creation of all the items and go to the association. Then let me associate to the child or also. Go to actions and then go to associate. Certain act. I will now associate my child or so we'll now go there and associate our child or find select it and then click on apply and then click on done by which what happens. Sir? We have completed the creation of three items and then associating the respective org. No, right? Save and close. Now let us go there and then make a transaction. I will now right click and then duplicate. Always right click and duplicate and then go for a new new one and then there you make a transaction. So click on the star icon and then I go to the inventory overview. So I go to the inventory overview. I'm going over there. So here I will not perform a miscellaneous result. No, fine. Click on it. I will not perform a miscellaneous. Result. Go there. So click on it. I will not perform a miscellaneous result. Fine. Create miscellaneous transaction. Go there. You are going to create a miscellaneous transaction. Click on the create miscellaneous transaction. I am going to create a miscellaneous transaction. Drop down. What happens? It will be what? <clears throat> Go there. I will not create what? Miscellaneous result. No. And then the ammo account number is what? 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1004. This is the offset account. I am doing it. I am not doing the costing. Costing we already tested. So we are not going to test it. I will not make it reverse. Otherwise, you have to make a no and then push everything to costing area and then do it. Click on plus. So the 13th item, I am going to search for it. 13th item. Go there. The T10. Fine. Is the 13? No. 13. And give it up. T10 13 is the one. I'm going to go in. I don't go there. The item is already available. T10 13. Fine. Why oh, it is not coming? I've forgotten to assign it. I don't go there. I'm not query for it. I'm not going to the browse item. I made a forgotten to assign it actually. I'm not going for the T10 13. The T10 13. I've not query for it. T10 13 is no control. Fine. No control item is a very correct one. It's already assigned to the child. Oh, I already made the 13 as a lot fixed actually. I should have been okay. That I have not seen it actually. I made a mistake. It doesn't matter. You don't make a mistake, you make a running number one. 20 and 30 is the one. So go there. It's already assigned. Then go there, click on it. So here, what happens? T10 13 is not coming at all. I will not say T10 and then give a tab. Now we'll not see whether it comes or not. So T10 percentage and then I'll search for it. Now I click on search. T10 13, go down, go down, go down, go down. So there's no control is coming. I don't know why it's not coming there now. I click on it. <laughs> and I give a tab, it is not coming now. Okay, no control is the one. I click on it. It is there actually. So go there. Sub inventory drop down. And then I will now choose what the first sub inventory, which is pre specified. Now tell me if you go to the edit locator, it is a no control item. Item is having a no control. If I click on edit now. If you click on edit, what happens? You go there. And then if you drop down the locators, we can transact only on 1 and 11. If you make a search now, fine, we can make a transaction only on 1 and 11. No other thing is not possible. If you go on and try to pull a new rack, fine, go there. I will not say 2 iPhone, 3 iPhone, 4, and then give a tap. It will not say cheapo. I will not allow it at all. It is not allowed at all. So there is no such locator available because the sub inventory is a pre specified. If you go on and search for it, it is not available at all. Nothing is available. Thank you for answer. No. So we can only transact onto the existing locators because sub inventory is pre specified, even though item is no control. Click on, click on search. Sub inventory is pre specified. Go there. I will not choose another click on it. No, no, I go there. I will not choose what? 10 quantities. <clears throat> 10 quantities. So on 111, I am going to keep 10 quantities of a no control item. Item is having a no control. Click on it. Now, I will not transact the same item. I will not take a copy of it. I will not transact the item onto here. Dynamic sub inventory. If I click on plus now, I will not paste it. Also. Go there, click on it. I will not click on the edit it is now. Sub inventory is what? Sub 2 now. This time, sub 2. Sub 2 is dynamic in nature. If I click on edit, I am going to do it. Click on edit. And then here, what happens? I go to the locator. If you go on and see the locators, fine, click on search now, fine. We have got 200 door. But here, since it is dynamic and both the locators are full, we can very well create a new locator and then transact on this. Because it is dynamic in nature. Remember, item is no control, but we can transact with a new locator. Fine, click on OK now. If you say, what happens, you go there. 
what happens we cancel lock i will not what happens i create a new locator called two iphone three iphone four it will accept coolly in the first one it is not accepting it here i can even pull in a new almera and then keep it on also. this is for 20 commodities 20 commodities and go that one click on okay <laughs> I will not what I was click on plus and then I will not go for the third one. Thank you for the third one. You want to paste it. And then I will not transact to sub three. Sub three is a hybrid sub inventory. We can very well keep it on the floor as well as we can keep it on the what happens in the rack also. Then click on edit now. Find sub three is the one. And sub three is the one. Locator is not coming. Locator is not coming at all. Find go to the counter. The 30 quantities. Why locator is not coming? Can anybody say me why the locator field is grayed out actually? Why locator field is grayed out on sub three? Because sub three is the one which is going to see the item level control actually. Got it, Napan? Yeah, yeah. Just pull it. Item is no control, yeah. no locators coming. Had I chosen what uh, 14 or 15, then what happens? It will be doing it. Napan. So there is no no locator. I will not go for 30 quantities. Click on OK. I don't know now. Now what I do is I will not go for what 14th item. Napan. Click on plus now. Go there. 14th item. Napan. Go there. So T10. <laughs> 14 and then give a tab now. Already the items are there, fine. <laughs> that is the problem. If I click on search now, you're already having a lot of items. Fine. So this one, I, I already have a banana also. Fine. I don't, I don't have to scroll down and do it. Now, fine. I made a mistake actually. Fine. This is a pre-specified now. If I click on the pre-specified. And then this time I'm going to transact on sub three now. Sub three, I'm transacting it. If I click on edit and then see now, fine. The locator will be coming now. Now locator will be coming. Now sub three is a pre-specified now. If I click on it. Now what happens? I'm going to ask a question now. Fine. Sub three is a pre-specified. So here three and 33 are there. So can I create one more locator here and then transact on it or not? Item is a pre-specified control. No. Can you say yes or no? Can I create one more locator here in this sub three? Item is a pre-specified control. Can I create a one or not? There is a question. Three, 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 it will definitely accept. If you go on and say it is not, it is not, it is not three, four, five, three, iPhone, four, iPhone, five. If you go there, it will not say cheapo. I will not do it. Because there is no such locator at all. Because the item can be kept only on an existing locator only. Got it, no point? So go there. And then make a search, no point? Click on search. We can transact only under the existing locators. I will not say choose it. And then click on OK. Because the item control is a pre-specified control. Go there. I will not go for what? Uh, 50 quantities. Click on this. Click on OK. So click on OK. Now, I will not go for the last item. I click on it. I will not go for the last item. 15th item I am going to go for. So 10, 20, 30, 40. Now let me get the 40. Go there. So go there. Click on plus now. I will now go for the 15th item. So T10. Fine. T10. 15 is the one. Fine. Give it up. And then click on search. Now find 15th. I'm going to do it. So we already have all those things. Now I will not say dynamic. Dynamic I'm going to choose. I should have chosen a different number actually. My mistake I made. It. So I'm again transacting it on sub 3 now. Fine. Click on it. I will not go on the transact on sub 3 now. Fine. Sub 3 I'm going to transact. Fine. Click on it. Now. You tell me whether I can do a creation of a locator or not. Item is a dynamic control. So we got three. So can I pull in a rack called three, four, five and then keep it on that? Can somebody say yes or no? Will it allow or not? Make a guess. It will allow because what happens? Item is dynamic. Since item is dynamic, it will allow you to create a locator during transaction. Thank you. Okay, now it's not coming. So go there. Now what happens? I will not say. 3 iPhone 4 iPhone 5. Chalega. It will not say. I'll not go there. Quantity is what? 50. 50 quantities. So go there. Click on OK. By which what happens? We have not completed all the five transactions. The last three are done on sub three actually. Fine. There's no control. This is the pre-specified control. This is the dynamic control. Fine. Click on submit by which what happens? We are not completing all the transactions. So go there. The transaction process, no issues. We'll now go on and have a look at the stock. We'll go have a look at the stock. Fine, click on it. We'll go to the item quantities. Fine, manage item quantities. And then we're going to have a look at the stock. Fine, click on it. I'll not say T10. 13. Give a tab now. 13 and 30. I will not choose what. No control. Fine, click on OK. And fine, will not show the stock. Click on search. No, fine. will not show the stock. So expand it. It will not show how much is the stock. Expand it. So here what happens? It is there in sub 1. Now, fine, click on it. Sub 1. Fine, expand it. And then it will not show on which locator it is. It will also show the locators also. Locators also. And then sub two, what happens? They expand it. It will not show the locator also. Is a two, three, four. We have not is since the sub inventory is dynamic. It allowed you to create a new locator during transaction. Sub three, what happens? That you won't have any locator at all because item is a no control item. So there is no. It has been kept on the shop floor itself. 
on the it is on the on the floor of the sub inventory where I kept it. It is not kept on any locators. I will not go on the query my 14th item now. So go there. The T10 fine 14. I'm gonna give it out. The 14th I know. The pre specified control fine click on okay. I have given a different number because I made I made a mistake by not seeing the proper one of my on search number. The 14th item, if you go on and make a search number, click on expand it. Expand it. Right. It is not there in the space, man. It is located what 333. So 333 is a located of the account borders. So go there. So since what happens, this is a pre specific item. It can be what happens there. And the three, we can only transact onto the existing locators only. We'll not go for the what? The 14th item, we'll not go on the, how about the 15th item actually. So T10. T10, 15th item, fine, give it have now. I'll not do that. Dynamic one, fine, click on OK. So here, we have allowed creation of a locator during transaction. Click on again. So click on, expand it. Expand it. On 3, 4, 5, we have got it. Whereas 14, we are unable to create a locator because the item is a pre-specified one. Here, item is a dynamic one. And so when you're transacting on sub-3, sub-3 is basically a hybrid controlled sub inventory So we can even keep it on the floor as well as in the rack. Depending upon the item level control, and we have got to stop. So this completes what the locator control now. The locator control is now completed. So we go for the next topic. Sub inventory restriction. Now we have completed this topic. You know, then you go for the next topic called what? Sub inventory restriction. So go there. Now let us say I am not going to buy a laptop. So in this one, what happens? Uh, I will now say what uh, sub one is an air conditioned sub inventory and sub three is an air conditioned sub inventory. The management has given a what happens a, a decision that what happens it has to be kept only on air conditioned sub inventory or not on sub two, not on sub two. So the management's directive is what we have to keep it either on sub one or sub three and no other sub inventory because they are the only air conditioned sub inventories. Laptop has to be kept only on the air conditioned sub inventory. So we go there and then we will now create the item actually. Sub inventory restriction. I'll go there. So I'll not go to the space. Go so I'll not go to the product item. I'll go to the browser item. Click on the now. I'll not go on the create what? <laughs> click on the now. Mm. Very important. I'll not go on the create our 16th item, which is having a sub inventory restrict actually. Thank you, Connor. I will not create the 16th item. But click on create item. We are going to create an item which is going to restrict the sub inventory. So T10 is the one. Go there. I will not choose it. Click on it. I will not choose what? T10. So go there. Put item so click on okay now fine. Mm -hmm. so click on yes no fine i'll not go with it. 16th item i'm going to create t10 16 fine i will now say sub restrict that means what we can transact it only onto the restricted sub inventory fine in our case one and three now fine click on it click on this code and then go to the specifications now i go to the specifications and then here what happens you go there go down go down, go down. so in the bottom what i'm going to do is what you go there so in this place, I will not go to the inventory. If I go to the inventory, in the inventory in the bottom, what happens? I will not say restrict sub inventory is going to be yes. No. Restrict sub inventory is yes. No. <clears throat> and then stock locator control, no control is okay. It doesn't matter. Okay, this we already tested. Now fine, I'm not testing this. So once when you make a restrict sub inventory is yes, we can transact only onto the restricted sub inventory. Out of three sub inventories, the management says what one and three are only you can transact. So restrict sub inventory yes. This is already tested now. Will not, this is the next topic actually. Restrict sub inventory yes. I will not go there. I will not go to the associations and let me associate to the child dog. Actions and then what happens? Self and act. You are going to be done. So I will not put what? T10 and then enter. I will not choose the first thing. Select it and then click on apply and then click on done. So by which what happens? Sir? The item is a restricted sub inventory. Fine. It can be transacted only in reserve. I will click on save and close. So now, as of now, we are not told the system where and all we can transact. So management has given a directive that this is the air conditioner sub inventory, this is the air conditioner inventory, we can only do it. But in the system, we are not mentioned. So it will not allow you to transact in any of the sub inventories because in the system, we are not mentioned this is the air conditioner sub inventory. Go there. So we will now go to the, what happens, inventory manager. We will not try to create a miscellaneous transaction. Fine, click on it. We will not click on the create miscellaneous transaction. Here, what happens? It will not allow you to transact in any of the sub inventories because we are not mentioned on the system where and all we can transact. Is there any the result? Fine, go there. So go there, click on it. Is there 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1004 is the one. Fine, go there. So I will not say what current item cost is going to be yes. Then click on person. So 
you want it is the t10 fine it is the 16th item no fine it is the 16th 16th item it is the sub inventory registry if it drop down on the sub inventory we are not told on the system where and all we can transact fine click on search what happens ye miledu kuch nahi milega yahan par because we are not told where and all i can transact now what happens i am going to do it i will not go to the manage sub inventory here now i will not say i can transact on sub 1 and sub 3 only this 16th item i will not select sub inventory sub 1 and then click on the manage item sub inventories the manage item sub inventory is the restriction actually i will not select the sub 1 fine click on the manage item sub inventories and then go there and then here what happens i am going to add items what are all the things we can transact with fine whichever let us say the desktop needs a uh, what happens air condition and then laptop needs an air condition whichever needs an air condition we will not add it now fine click on plus now 16th item needs air condition sub inventory I click on plus no fine. I will not say what the item. I will not say T10 fine 16 and then give it up. One second. Right. Is that T10? <clears throat> fine. Sixteen and then give it up. Give orders. So this needs a, what happens? The air conditioning fine. Click on seven please. So let us say this is a laptop. And then seventeenth is a desktop. So this also get added. So whichever needs a air conditioning, the subordinate you can keep on adding it. So those items can very well be transacted on sub one. So click on that. So the item manage item sub inventories. We add the item. Right? Click on that. Now what happens? You go there, and then you will know on the sub three also we can very well what happens? The transact this item. So let's click on that. Click on the manage item sub inventories, and then click on plus now. Right? So what are there? Be many items which can be transacted on the other. So we had to enter all this. Right? So here we have only one item. Fine, sixteen, and then give it up. So click on save and close by which we are done it. So now two sub inventories will now come during transaction. Right? Click on it. If you go to this place now, right? What is the create new inventory section? If you go and then make a search, you'll now find sub one and sub three will be coming. We can very well transact on sub one and sub three because they are all air conditioners. We don't mention as uh, air conditioners, but we mention as what manage items sub inventories. So items can be transacted only to the restricted sub inventories because the restriction on the item is enabled. Actually, now I'm not transacting it. I'm not transacting it. So what I do is I will now go there and then I will now query that. Right? This completes restrict sub inventories. Again, next is what locator restriction. Let us say I have a lowermost locator, and then the middle locator, and then the top locator. If I am going to keep the tube light, I always love to keep it on the lowermost locator because even by mistake, if it falls down, it will not break at all. So very fragile items will be kept on the bottommost locators only. So we are going to restrict it also. So we will now enable the locator control also. Right? Go there, click on it. I will now go to what? <coughs> go there, manage product. I will not go to the browse item. I will not query for it. I might click on the browse items. I will go to the browse items. I will go to the browse items. And then here, what happens? I will not query the 16th item. So, T10. 16, I am not going to query. I will click on search. You are searching for it. I will click on search. No, I did. So, I will not open up the item in the master. In the master, what happens? I am going to open it. I am not going to open it up in the master. Go down. Open it. So, in the bottom, what happens? I go to the specifications. And then here, what happens? I go to the inventory. Up. So, I can go to the inventory. So here in the bottom, what happens? We have already restricted the sub inventory actually. So let us now restrict the locators also. Fine, click on this. Now, if you go and then try to make a transaction, we cannot transact on any of the locators. But sub inventory wise, we can transact on one and three. But we cannot transact on any of the locators because we are not till told the system where and all I can transact. Actually. So restrict locators is also on. So give a save and close. Now fine, click on save and close. Let us now go there and then click on the create miscellaneous transaction. The same. I will not choose sub one. Now fine, click on it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. So now what happens? You go there. Click on the any details. I'll now I was I'll now give a save. Fine. Whenever you make a major change, what happens? You have a habit of logging out and logging in. Now fine. That is what happens. The changes may not reflect. Sometimes it will reflect, but it is preferable to what happens? Log out and log in for any setup change actually to reflect. I'll now close it. Now fine, click on it. Close it. I will not sign in now <clears throat> and then go there. Let us now make a transaction. Right? We'll not try to make a transaction. Fine. Click on the star icon. I go to the inventory overview and then we'll now make a transaction. Fine. Click on inventory overview. Fine. Click on. We'll now create a miscellaneous transaction. Fine. Go there. So click on the create miscellaneous transaction. Here I'm now going to make a transaction. Fine. So here what happens? The miscellaneous result now. Fine. Miscellaneous result. And then account is what? 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1004 is the one. Fine. Go there. I will now say what happens. The costing is yes. Now, fine. Go there. And then click on plus now. Click on plus and go there. Item is what? T10. <clears throat> 16. No, thank you for that. T10 16 is the one. So drop down. So here, what happens? You'll have two sub inventories. I will not choose sub one now. And then here I go to the AD details and then have a look at it. Click on it. So here, what happens? Sub inventory one. If you go to the locator, now fine, click on the locator. <clears throat> locator, fine, click on search, now fine. It will not show all this. Now, mainly was he is not allowing you to show mainly because what happens? Uh, the attribute is master controlled actually. 
So it will not be low now. Fine. I will not change it to org control and show it to you. Fine. It will not even come at all. Fine. Give a, I will not cancel. I will not. What happens? I make it as a org control. I will not go there top down. I will not duplicate it. Fine. Go there. Duplicate it. I will not change it to org control. No. Because every org will have a different one. Fine. Go there. I will not change the control to org level. No. Fine. Click on set up and maintenance. That is how it works actually. Click on set up and maintenance. Go there. So go to this place. Fine. Click on it. I will not click on search. Go there. I will not say my item. Percentage item. Percentage add trip A T T R I B add trip fine control. So percentage item add trip control is the one item attribute control fine. Click on it. It will now go to the next task fine. Click on the operational attributes. So, click on it. so it's on the inventory now fine inventory and go there. It is what's called uh, percentage uh, locator fine locator percentage locator fine. Now go there. So restrict locators. It is the org level fine stock locator control fine. The stock locator control is the master level. Right? Stock locator control also what happens? I will not change it to the org level. Restriction. Restrict locator is all, but this is the master level. I will not change it to org level. So go there. And then I will not search for everything. Right? Blank search. I will not make it. No, right? on it. I will not make it. Restrict locators. Right? Inventory. Now, all this thing. Majority of the attribute will be at the org level. Only certain things only will be at the master level. Right? Restrict sub inventory is org level. Restrict what happens? The restrict sub inventory is org level. And then and everything is coming properly. Uh, so here, yeah, you can see what happens. Everything is at org level. Okay, all, for not ours, no fine. So org level. majority of the attributes will be at the org level actually. So this is okay. Lot expiration is all okay. Bulk pick is okay. Fine. Go give and save and close. No fine. Now the locator control as well as the restrict locator is not fine. Click on okay. No fine. Go that. I will not. What happens? Log out and log in and then come in and then have a log out and log in. So sign out and sign in, and then go there. So click on confirm and then do it now. Okay, click on it and then whatever you know, log in now. So we will not try to make a transaction on the sub one actually. Fine, go there. Click on it. We will not go to the star icon. Fine, go there. So go to the inventory overview. We will not perform a transaction on the first sub inventory. Fine, click on it. Go, go there. I don't know what happens. I'll create miscellaneous transaction. Okay. I'm not going to create a miscellaneous transaction. Fine. Okay. Drop down and then choose the miscellaneous result now. Miscellaneous result. And then go there. Account is what? 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1004 is the one fine. Go that corner. I will not go to the place fine. Go there. Make it as yes. No fine. Click on person. I will not put the 16th item over here. No fine. T10. Fine. 16th. Let me give it up. 16th item. What is it? Oh, sorry. It is a T10. It is a T10. 16 is the one fine. Give it up. I am giving it no fine. Click on. Sub one. I am going to choose no fine. Click on sub one. I am not choosing sub one. Fine. Click on the edit details. No fine. Edit details. So if you go on the edit details, fine. Click on it. So here, what happens? If you go on and see on this place, now fine, click on it, and then click on search. Now fine, click on search. It is not showing me, but what happens? Uh, I it has already got enabled actually. There is a because this is not happens. No coming. Now fine, click on it. I will not. What happens? Go there. I will not right click and then duplicate. Now fine, duplicate. And then since it is the master level, it has already got enabled actually. That is the problem. If you go to this place, fine, click on it. <clears throat> so click on the product information management. Had it been at the child level, what happens? It will not even, if you change in the master, it will never reflect on the child also. Right? Click on this. You go there. And then if you go and then have a look at it. Go to the browse items and then have a look at it. <clears throat> so we have to see on the child. All the controls will all be at the child level. And somebody has changed the master level. I will not go to the browse items and then go to the 16th item over here. So T10. Right? 16. And make a search. No, click on search. And then go there. Here. It made a change only in the master, but since it is a master control attribute, it has now got reflect on the child also. The bottom one is the child dog. Fine, click on it. If you go to the specifications and then go to the inventory and then have a look at the on inventory. And then go there. Now what happens? Go there. And then have a look at the button. And in this place, what happens? The uh, restrict locators is now is known actually. Fine. I will not make it as a yes actually. I am not making it as a yes actually. So if you say yes, then what happens? It will not allow you to what happens to transact on anywhere at all. Yes, no. On the child org, what happens if it now is in the master I made is no, what happens the child I'm making as yes no. Now it will not allow you to transact on any of the locators now. Right? Give a save and close. Now what happens? You go to the create miscellaneous transaction. I will not give a cancel and then come out of it. The locator will be grayed out now. Right? Click on cancel and save. Click on it. Cancel. And then click on yes no. Right? The locator will be grayed out. So click on it. Now it is made as yes in the child org. I will not go to the inventory over you, and then I will not try to create a transaction. Right? Click on it. No, what about the create miscellaneous transaction? <laughs> Drop it down. The miscellaneous result now. Thank you. On the miscellaneous result. Go down. The miscellaneous result. The 10 iPhone. 
hundred iPhone, one thousand four, the one point, the offset account, you know, five hundred. To make the adjustment, five hundred. And then here, yeah, I will give a plus. And then I will put the sixteenth item. I find T ten sixteen is that restrict subunity locate is also just mine. I will choose the subunity one. Sub and then go there. And then click on the edit details bank of the account areas. And then here, locators wise, what happens there? We cannot transact on anywhere at all because they are not specific. And nothing is coming because we are not told the system in which which locators I can transact on someone actually. Now, what happens? We will not restrict the level. So we'll not, we'll not go there. I will not right click on the duplicate. We will not do the locator restrictions also. We will not perform the locator restriction bank of that because it can be transacted only on the restricted locators bank of that account. We will not go to the place bank account. We will not go to what? Setup and maintenance. And then we will not restrict the locators also. Click on it. Go there. I will not click on search. No, fine. Click on search. And here, what happens? I will not say manage percentage. Sub percentage. Fine. Look up percentage. I go to the manage sub and the locators bank of that account. I will not go there. The organization choosing is correct. No, fine. I will not choose sub one. I go there. I will not say manage locators. No. Previously, I have gone to manage sub inventories. I will not go to the manage locators. No, fine. Click on the manage. No, no. I will not have to go to the manage sub inventories only. Manage item sub inventories. I go there. In this one, I select it and then go to the manage item locators. In this one, you select it and then manage item locators and then go there and then say that I can transact. Fine. Click on plus. No, fine. I am not going to transact only on the 11th locator. No, fine. 11 iPhone. 11 iPhone. 11. That's it. So click on save and close. So we can transact layers. So we are not restricted to this now. Fine. We will now go there and then click on the create miscellaneous transaction. Cancel it. And, go there. and again, go to the edit details and then have a look at it. Now what happens if you go and then make a search on the locators. Only 11 will come. One will not come at all. If you make a search now, fine. Only 11 will come. 11 is the only one coming. Because we are restricted only to the level. Okay. So we can transact only on that. So this is completing the discussion on restrict locators also. So click on submit. It will be going into the 11th submit. So you must provide a value for the quantity attribute. I will say 10 quantities. So click on submit. So we have completed what? These topics today. We have completed what? The locator control we have completed. The sub inventory restriction we have completed. And then we have completed the locator restrictions. Is it all clear? Can somebody say yes to me? Three topics we have completed. Very heavy, na? <laughs> How do you feel so? Can you open up your mic and then speak now? Yeah, sir. Yes, sir. It's very heavy, na? <laughs> yes, sir. The only thing is you have to practice everything. But you are able to understand whatever I say, na? You are able to understand. Only thing is what happens. You have to sit yeah, and then sir, take notes. Yeah, time. The time to understand. Time is required. Time to so we will now meet at 3 p.m. tomorrow and then we will now continue on this. No, fine. Bye for now. Okay. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, 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 bye. Thank you so much, sir. Bye, bye. bye.